any more delay, I'd like to introduce you to Courtney. Courtney has actually, we've been friends for, for quite a while and I've, I've watched Courtney kind of grow up the past six years and become the woman she is today. And I must say she is truly an inspiration, someone that I look up to myself. She's literally a go-getter. She started it. She took the leap that so many of us battled to do and she put all her baskets and trust within herself which is something that I think many of us are so worried to do because we don't know, oh, what happens if, you know, if we don't make it through tomorrow? And Courtney is saying, well, I will make it through tomorrow and I'm going to show you how I'm going to make it through tomorrow. So without any further ado, I'm going to hand over to Courtney and let her talk to you about Oso Niche and her brand and take you through a couple of things. Awesome. Thanks so much, Max. That's a really nice little introduction. Um, no, I think that I'm not presenting anything specifically today. Um, I think that was more going to be a question and answer kind of um, set up. Uh, but basically who I am and what I'm doing is I'm Courtney. Um, I'm 29 years old and I quit my job last year to start my own business. Um, and everyone thought that I was crazy because it was in the middle of a pandemic, but um the reason why is I just really was unhappy in my job. And as soon as in pandemic, they kind of started holding the job over my head um, or everyone's heads and saying, you know, you be so grateful you still have a job. And I kind of thought, well, I'm not. <laughs> I hate it here. <laughs> and um, I don't I like I don't want to be here. It's not what I'm doing. It's not fill filling my passion or my purpose. So um, I took that leap of faith and I started my own business. Um, I've started a self-love and self-care platform, which um, I'm still figuring it all out. But at the moment, it is very much a pamper box, you know, subscription therapy box with um, the hopes to grow into a platform and a community of women um, for support and to build some confidence in ladies. So that's what I've currently started up. I still freelance. I'm still an entrepreneur. I'm still hustling every day, um, <laughs> but I don't regret any of it. It is very interesting and it is very exciting. And excuse that I don't look all pampered today as my boxes. <laughs> I've just been running around doing all the hustling things as one would. So <laughs> it's been a hectic day. So um, yeah, but Maxine, I think if you want to do some questions and um, we're going to talk about the ups and the downs of entrepreneurship and um, then if anyone else wants to talk about the journey and any advice or any tips um, and I'm open to it. Okay, cool. So I think we'll start off with something a little bit easy. <laughs> so Maxine, um, tell us what have been the three most influential people in your life in the past year and helping you through this process of the entrepreneurial journey? Okay, perfect. Um, so <laughs> the one is going to be so out there. So I've actually got famous people and then obviously I've got my own people. Um, so I'm going to start with the famous ones because they're easy. Um, so my first one is Richard Branson. And I actually um, started reading his book, uh, Virgin. And um, it's about how he started everything. And in that book, it actually says that there's no place better to, or no time better to start a business than in a global pandemic. So it really was one of the, um, the pushing factors for me. I thought, well, if Richard Branson can do it, then surely I can too. <laughs> so um, he was very influential and I read his book and I resonated with a lot of the things that he said. And I, if, if I could recommend anyone to read a book, it would be that book, um, just because it's a quite risk-taking and he is incredibly influential. And then um, another one is Oprah. <laughs> Please, <laughs> yeah, it is very interesting if you can read um, or listen to her podcast. Uh, she's got Soulful Conversations. And it's very much in the journey that I am in. And I don't know if anyone else is on that path, you you will have to resonate with her, but it is very much around the awakening, your passion and your purpose in life and forgiveness, gratitude. So it is really around meditating and a spiritual journey that you're going on, um, which is something that I have been going on in the past year, which has been remarkable for me. Um, so those are definitely the two um, famous people. And then Simon Simic, start with why. So those were the three principles that I kind of started on. 
And then from my own perspective in, um, in my journey, the influences, I think the first one was that I did a big run to Cape Town, which was a charity run. And um, we ran from Joburg to Cape Town with a group of people in a relay team. It was a whole week. And in the week, I did about 182 kilometers, which kind of showed mindset matters that I was not fit enough. We were in the pandemic. We were running around our houses trying to train. Um, we were supposed to go in April and it got postponed to October. By the time we got to October, we were all burnt out. Nobody had trained. I think the longest I had done was a five kilometer run and I wasn't even doing them well. So by the time that we actually started doing the journey and I think on the one shift, I managed to do 32 kilometers um, on like eight hours of sleep in three days. And I kind of just thought, you know what, if your mind says you can do it and you appreciate the things around you, you can do it. So if you can get your mind there, you'll, you'll be able to do that. So that was definitely an influential factor because when I came back, I really thought, remember that one time that you were pushing and you thought you couldn't get through there, you can do it. And then um, the other factors in, or people in my life have just been support. Um, I've had monumental support from mom and dad, which has actually been incredibly humbling. Um, I think that you do need support when you when you start your own thing. You do need you do need funding every now and then. You have to figure it out. You are investing a lot of yourself and a lot of money and a lot of time, and you don't realize how much you're doing, the amount that I've pulled from my investments, the amount that I've borrowed and loaned. Um, it is a lot, but at the same time, I just keep looking at it as an investment, and it's just a stock investment. It's my own stock. It's my own investment from that perspective. Um, but I've had, yeah, so that support has been phenomenal, and then support on... Um, you have to have a business coach. So I've got a business partner and a business coach that I meet with to just refocus. Um, if you're doing any sort of business startup, uh, business coach is fundamental. You need to know someone who's doing your finances for you. You need to know someone who's done the journey before to understand that it's okay. I've already in my first, I haven't even done six months. I think I'm only in my fifth month now. Um, I failed so many times, but there are just little learnings. Even today, I've had so many learnings. Um, so yeah, those were, I think those would be my pillars. Mom, dad, my sister, my roommate has been phenomenal. I've moved in in July and I resigned in August. So Shane, she's really had it and my room's been turned into a storage room. <laughs> <laughs> she has deliveries and shame so she's really been a support structure I said when I'm when I'm a millionaire I'll take her out for, <laughs> for a nice dinner <laughs> spoiler but um no so yeah I think support structure has been yeah phenomenal well I think you've, you're definitely putting the right things out into the universe you're going to be a millionaire you're going to be successful <laughs> I have to be <laughs> pay back my loans <laughs> No, 100%. You have to put it out there. You have to visualize it. A lot of people aren't necessarily on that, you know, journey or any of that sort of stuff. But I think if you want to want to do it, you need to speak it and you need to visualize you achieving it and set the goals um, and align to them. Make sure that every habit that you're doing consistently aligns to the goal that you want to achieve. And that and that goes for every area in your life. You can't say that I want to get fit and you sign up to the gym and then you don't actually change your eating habits or look into why or all of those sort of things so every single goal that you decide to do you need to align consistently and it doesn't have to be perfect and we've already spoken that it, it doesn't need to be perfection it just needs to be progress um, and consistent yeah so you can have some days where you fall but make sure the next day you get up again exactly as long as you're learning something that's it exactly um, yes, absolutely so what would you say is your biggest failure and what did you learn from it? So up until, up until now, obviously. Yeah. So um, in the beginning, my business partner and I, which was probably a little bit interesting, we were very ambitious um, and we just thought, you know what, we're going to this market with this box. We're going to launch a monthly box and, and it's, I'm from marketing in myself. And I just thought, no, there are people in the world that will buy this. And yes, people have the money to buy it, but they don't know about you and your product. So you have no loyalty, you have no customer. Um, so we were very ambitious. We created a box that we thought would be wonderful. We got somebody on board that was going to, was um, 
like an ambassador who would be able to push out the brand for us a bit. We got some of their product and um, yeah, I invested a lot in boxes and my box of the month was Women's Month, so it was pink. Um, so I bought 200 boxes, thought I was going to sell 200 boxes in my first month and I bought 200 stock units and yeah, <laughs> um, that's why my brand is now pink because I have 200 boxes sitting in my garage <laughs> and, I, um, and it, which is awesome. Like I still got to, cause you buy them in bulk. So you get them at a lower cost, but my biggest fumble was definitely, I have three stock items that are not um that are not sellable like they're just not um some of it's damaged stock um one of them just does not fit the client it was the most expensive product in my box and the other one i just it's actually not worth what you pay for so i've ended up with three stock items that are completely a bit of a fumble for me i still i don't even include them on my website at the moment i don't know how to sell them I think about them all the time. <laughs> I just wake up at three o'clock in the morning going like, oh, well, that was a huge investment. Um, so those were definitely, those would probably be up until now my biggest fumbles. Um, and I'm still dealing with them. But learning curve is that you don't have a market. You don't have, you, you're very overambitious at first, be very conservative. So um, now when I'm creating boxes, I do very much minimum stock orders, minimum quantities, and you might be paying more now. And in your mind, you think, no, you must pay less as, you know, pay for the whole lot and pay less. No, look at what your cash flow can allow and pay a little bit more now. And then down the line, you will be able to pay less and, and you know, then you'll get more profit margin down the line, but skimp on the profit for now, but pay less. So that's definitely been my biggest learning curve is you don't have an immediate market market and um, audience and that people need to trust you to buy, especially if, you, if they're putting money down for a quality product. And that's the thing as um, quality, not necessarily price. So the customer won't always a customer is less trusting when the price is not as high because then they're able to compromise on quality and they don't mind. Yeah. So that's why sometimes you will get people who buy from certain online platforms that they don't know is because it's a lot cheaper. And then if they get it and they don't like it, that's okay. So that's also true. We are, um, we're sticklers for the rand value <laughs> <laughs> and how much the rand can get us and how far can it get us? So that's exactly. <laughs> exactly that yeah so i'd say that's the biggest learning definitely mm. so if we were to take out so obviously you you've given some great advice already on having a business coach having someone to do your finances but if you had to take what would you say are your best resources that you have that have helped you along the way to get you to where you are now Okay, so um, definitely finance. Uh, so I use a platform called um, Xero, which is X E R O, which is it's actually quite pricey. But my business partner is an integrator, so um, I've I've got her helping me with that platform. But it's great from an invoicing perspective. Um, get on top of your finances from the beginning because if it scales and you're not on top of your finances, then you don't know who owes you money or what bills you need to pay or where you've loaned money and all of that sort of stuff. So if you can be on top from the beginning and separate personal to business from the beginning, I'd recommend that. I'm still, my finances give me a little bit of a, a like stress, but, and I'm on top of most of it. Um, but yeah, definitely finances. So get a platform. I know that there are other platforms that you can use. I use Zero, so you can find ones that are similar. Um, I use Canva. Um, which is also a free platform for design. It has all the templates you need. It has elements. Um, I use the pro because I use a lot more stock images and stuff on my freelancing side, but um, it has mockups available. It is an incredible platform to use. So you don't necessarily need a graphic designer for um, things. And, and I'm a graphic designer. So I use Canva for quick jobs. Um, you get card templates, they, they put the bleed in for you and everything like that. So it really, really is a, is a good source. And then recently I'd say something like a MailChimp or a HubSpot, um, just because, you know, we all want followers on Instagram. 
but um, none of those contacts are yours. So the biggest lesson is to make sure that you've got an email database. Um, so using MailChimp and creating a journey, they say email conversions are still your highest. So um, definitely get onto something along those lines. And then I, um, do a f I do a lot of webinars and courses. So I've signed up to Future Females um, to also just up my knowledge on social media marketing. Again, I'm in marketing, but it, it's always changing. So I'm always doing things like that. So yeah, I'd say those are my, my top um, things. And then obviously to have social media. Yeah. Uh, LinkedIn, huge source. Like there's so much business that happens on LinkedIn and then Instagram and Facebook. And I'm actually getting onto Twitter now. So making sure that there's just Word, Pinterest, Etsy, all the platforms available. Yeah, no, I think it definitely helps to have as much, spread the word, like you say, as much as possible about your brand. Um, it's something that Karen says all the time is that a person needs to be in touch with your brand seven times before they actually make a sale or you know make a purchase or decide to interact with you. So yeah. That's something I kind of keep with me no matter where I go is the seven yeah. principle rule. So, yeah. then, uh, you know, Courtney, you had a very interesting experience and, you know, through all the hardships and everything, how do you bring kind of the self-care and the self-love? So like you've said, you've had a really bit of a tough day today. It's been kind of really yeah. grueling, you know, for a lack of a better word, it's been pretty shitty. How do you now kind of at the end of the day sit back and kind of, do a bit of self-love and a bit of self-care. Make sure that it doesn't pour into tomorrow. Um, so this week is going to be hectic for me. I'm doing quite a big deal that I'm hoping that will scale for me in the future. So it's something that it's an opportunity um, and it's a lot of last minute running around, but it is very much um, something that I need to do. So it's been very stressful. And I don't think I necessarily um, respond to stress very well. I think my body like crumbles. <laughs> so it is one of those things. Um, so I am basically today, what I'll do is at the end of the day and this morning I woke up earlier, I made sure that I went to bed at nine anyway last night because last night was very much the same as today. Went to bed at nine o'clock, read, so I didn't watch TV, um, read, had a cup of tea, chamomile is my favorite. And then this morning got up early because as your alarm's going to be on, if you're stressed, you're going to be up anyway. So get out of bed, um, have that cup of coffee. And then I do journaling. So I have a beautiful journal. Um, it's from a girl that I ran to mad to run with. Um, her name's Kali. She's got a brand called Mind Your Hero. And I stock her stuff on my website as well. And it's basically just an appreciation of your day, a gratitude of things that you love in your life, goals for your day, a habit tracker. And then um, it reflects on your day as well. So it kind of says why you're proud of yourself, um, you forgive yourself for, you promise yourself something, and then you kind of reflect at the end of the day why you're proud of yourself and those sort of things. So those things are quite fundamental because I think that, especially in entrepreneurship, you forget the things that you have achieved because you're constantly just trying to do more so something um as big as just even getting a contact for a deal that's a huge win you know it might not necessarily work out but you've reached out and you've you've got yourself a corporate you know contact and um those are those are all wins so every single thing that you do you need to celebrate in some way so i just make sure that i reflect every day and i kind of go okay these are the things you have done and focus on what i have done opposed to what i haven't done because often you go oh i didn't get through my list but your list could have 25 things on it five things could be huge tasks so you know um so i make sure i reflect and then usually for myself i just i i love a bath so i really do love a bath i do bubbles um, sometimes I'll do the candle thing, not all the time, but I think I just put some music on. I make a cup of tea with my bath. So I'll make sure I'll do that this evening. Um, yeah, those are kind of my self-love and self-care elements. And then I'll treat myself. So like today I went and got a cup of coffee. Um, you know, it'll take away. Those things are nostalgic items. They make me feel they're like comfort in a cup. Yeah, I had, I had a chocolate today. <laughs> at nine o'clock this morning <laughs> I was like basically like half a Toblerone I was like yeah I get on my <laughs> while I'm eating <laughs> it was lunch so it's fine no but you know these little things 
they they yeah i do reward myself with food all the time i think there's people will reward themselves retail that sort of stuff i i love my my treats and um yeah so there are there's so many ways in which i reward myself i'm continuously looking for things to reward myself with <laughs> well, that's also something so it's not hard to do that you know and exactly. exactly now when you were saying kind of journaling i my, my sister is having a baby so I, i was going through some planners and i saw it you know there's a baby planner now that you can kind of stick up on the wall and you track things and i was like you know but we don't do that for ourselves anymore mm. you know you don't yeah. sit and reflect back on your day but you then you know you'll do that for someone else it's so easy to do that for someone else but it's so exactly. difficult to do that for yourself so i think no. that's really great advice and great pieces journaling has been something that i only picked up last year it was actually through so i had a trauma experience to um the ladies i had a big trauma experience last year and journaling um was one of the, the things that the re, the therapist uh, recommended and um i've kind of always gone oh you know write 10 things you're grateful for every day and i'm okay sure Um but honestly if I can recommend that to anyone it is probably one of the best ways to change your mindset um and it, I know positive thinking can also have a negative association to it but it's not necessarily about um always being positive but counting your blessings um something as simple as I have security or I have a roof over my head or I'm grateful for my network so I'm grateful for my opportunities um just looking at those things just highlight something in your brain that kind of just you know I am instead of saying oh I shouldn't have got out of bed this morning you're going oh I'm grateful to be out of bed this morning and it's it's amazing how it shifts your mindset subconsciously so that is something that I started with and now that I do the the journaling every day it is it's phenomenal yeah life changing stuff <laughs> it's great it's great That's awesome. so tell us what is the best compliment you have ever received Oof. Hmm. Um I think that um I think my my favorite is that my favorite compliment. I can't say best. I don't really know. It's been a long 30 years. Um <laughs> but I'd say my my favorite compliment is resilient. Yeah. I love I love being told that I'm resilient. Um I think it just because not everyone when they meet me knows my story. and i think that i've gone through my own hardships um in life and everyone's journey is so different um but mine have for me been such blessings because they've led me to where i am and um you know and i wouldn't even say that mine are the worst in the at all um but it has taken me a lot to overcome a lot of things and i think that resilience and strength is is actually quite such a compliment it just means you're strong. Mm. Something else that you can write in your journaling this afternoon. This <laughs> exactly. Yeah. You're strong, you're resilient. I know my favorite quote my mom always told me, well not quote, she just always said to me your, your day is only 24 hours, it can only last 24 hours. <laughs> I'm like, yeah. So <laughs> you'll get through those 24 hours, don't you worry. You can only have 24 hours of a bad day if you have a bad day. <laughs> 100%, 100%. Um okay cool so Courtney um where can our listeners connect with you online and get in touch with you So um you can connect with me through um through my website so it's osoniche.co.za and for it osoniche um I have a LinkedIn profile Courtney Louise Lawrence um and then I have my phone number WhatsApp uh Instagram my Instagram handle is court91 or osoni so I do use the both um which I am planning on growing my personal account as well into the entrepreneurial like kind of just talking about the journey as well um it's on the list <laughs> um but yeah any through any anyway if you pop me a message through WhatsApp or email would probably be the the quickest way in which I'll respond um or LinkedIn yeah Great. Perfect. Awesome. Thanks, Courtney. Thank you so much for sharing your experience with us and your journey. And yes, yes. you've got a couple of more hours left of today, and then you're going to go have your bath, and then we start tomorrow all over again. 
Yes, so, and I've got a glass of red wine left in the fridge and it's just enough for a glass. I'm like, all right. So my diet today has been chocolate and red wine. I'm, <laughs> I'm not sad. <laughs> it is hump day. So, you know, we're going to get over the hump and we, sometimes we need a bit of stuff to get us over there. So please, no worries. And thank you so much. And we're really looking forward to seeing more of Courtney and more of OC, OC Niche and just, you know, watching your brand grow. And just congratulations and well done. Thank you so much. Thanks so much for having me. I'm going to check out the chat and respond to anything there. And then I'm going to nip on out to finish this, this deal. Perfect. Thanks. I'm awesome. going to head over to Karen, who's going to take us to our next speaker. It was lovely hearing from you, your story, your resilience. I think it's very inspirational. And you know, it's typical entrepreneurial journey, isn't it? You, you fell, we pick ourselves up. We keep hustling every day. 12 years in, we're still hustling every day. So it was very, very nice to hear your story. Thank you so much. Well, I'm very excited to introduce Petunia. Petunia, are you able to switch your camera on? Yes. <laughs> Good afternoon. Hello. How are you? <laughs> Fantastic. I'm super excited. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> so glad to hear that. <laughs> So, Virginia, I think if you wouldn't mind taking a minute or two or five and introduce yourself to the listeners, tell us a little bit about you, your background, what you're busy with. Wow. Well, firstly, thank you so much, Maxine and Karen, for this fantastic opportunity to speak with, you know, your people. I appreciate it so much. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Uh, my name is Petunia. Um, I'm 33 years old, officially yesterday. Yeah. Oh, happy birthday. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the double three. <laughs> it's so exciting. Um, I am originally from Pumalanga, a very small village in deep, deep, deep bushbuck ridge somewhere in the Bundus. I'm sure when you cross the street, you find a few chickens and some cows deeper in there that's that's <laughs> us <laughs> and uh yeah I grew up in the village uh with my mom my dad my siblings and uh right now I'm married 15 years this year uh with two awesome amazing kids Nathan is six and Naomi is four um I run my own business it's called Audacity Works we do film production and that's been amazing because I never imagined that's what I'd be doing because I went to med school <laughs> and I did not think <laughs> this would be me one day. Um, uh, but basically I was a med school dropout, couldn't afford to continue with school. And there I was trying to figure out what's next. And I just knew that when you're at the bottom, there's no other way but up and so I began going up. <laughs> it's, it's quite a, a, a journey when you know you don't have many options. So you kind of you get into grind um, mindset immediately. Because, hey, that's pretty much all you've got. And I thank God for that because here I am today. Um, the, the film production side of things kind of give birth to the brand Only Petunia. Uh, sort of as an experiment, we were like, hey, you know, if we can build other people's brands and do amazing things, you know, for them, um, trying to help the world understand, you know, their brand. How about we do something in-house and then boom, here I am. <laughs> and now I'm on YouTube and um, I just couldn't bring myself to talk about things like fashion or makeup or anything like that, because I just kept on thinking of that Petunia who could be sitting in that village there by the chickens and the cows and everything else. <laughs> and she's sitting there trying to figure out how to get here. <laughs> so my channel is all about helping people make money online. Mm -hmm. And uh, it took off, you, you know, we started out kind of little by little trying to figure out what it's going to be. And 25,000 plus subscribers later, you know, it's doing really well. I mean, I thank God. Um, it's, it's been an amazing journey. And that's Petunia in a nutshell. <laughs> we like that Petunia in a nutshell. <laughs> so I, I have so many questions to ask you. I think the first burning question is your YouTube following and influence. Take us a little bit through how you're able to grow to a following of 25,000 subscribers. I think that's pretty phenomenal. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that. Wow. Um, 
you know, <laughs> every time someone asks me that, I'm, I really have a challenging time explaining it because I did not follow conventional strategies, you know, advertise here and push it there because I am not so great with social media. I'm just going to put it out there, <laughs> you know. <laughs> so when people ask, what are you on? I'm like, WhatsApp. <laughs> You know, it's embarrassing. <laughs> <laughs> embarrassing. So I, I couldn't have used like Instagram or anything else really to grow the channel. But I think the w- number one thing that I would definitely point the success to is the fact that I identified a need and I'm out here attempting to fulfill it. And that need, as long as it's there, people will find you. People will find you because they are out there seeking out solutions. The moment you attempt to be a solution to anybody for anything at all, people will find you. And really, if you look at um, the, the stats on the channel, if you look at the metrics, everything that's been going on, I really haven't been putting as much effort as many other people have been to try and grow their channels but the moment I put out any type of content at all people just appreciate that someone's out there looking for ways to help them take themselves to the next level and the next level means different things to different people to somebody Mm -hmm. else it's that side hustle that'll bring in an extra income to another person it's that where that next meal will be coming from or the next packet of nappies for you know a young single mom or whatever Mm -hmm. so as long as you are there trying to fulfill that need trust me it doesn't matter if the person is sitting in a little village in china they will find you they will Mm -hmm. find you i I think it's true you know if, if the hunger is great enough you're going to do what it takes that's and it. you're not going to allow your children to suffer. You know, as moms, we will do whatever we can. Even if we don't eat, we'll make sure our children eat. So if That's the hunger is great enough, we will make it happen. It's yes. so true. That's it. But Jenny, yeah, here's an interesting question for you. Okay. What keeps you up at night? So what are the things that keep you awake at night? But how do you counter that? So as you see stress or anxiety, things related to that, that keeps a person up and up. And then what do you do during the day to make sure that you counter that? Hmm. Wow, that's a fantastic question. <laughs> Among many other things. I'm just kidding. <laughs> well, I think the number one, <laughs> the number one thing that probably keeps me up at night is the understanding that there's still so much um there's still so many gaps there's still so many gaps uh like i said i've experienced pretty much the best of both worlds okay i've lived in a deep village no electricity no nothing and i mean we were content and but i I could see the struggles that went on in day-to-day life and then i'm living this life now i'm in joburg and you know life is (laughs) black and white, literally, from from what my previous experience was, from my upbringing. And I look now and I'm thinking, wow, you know, there are brilliant people sitting without without a platform to express their brilliance. And there's so many problems in the world that could be solved just by giving vent to the brilliance that is sitting, you know, dormant in in different corners of of life. And there are a number of uh, challenges that will always present themselves to keep knocking people down. And I'm sitting here probably with so many solutions that I might not be aware I have yet. And that's what keeps me up at night. How do I take what I have and turn it into something big enough to accommodate so many people that I know would probably do so much if they just had the platform. It keeps me up at night. Um, That's what helps me build my content as well. People ask me, why don't you post so much? It's because before I put something out there, I ask so many questions. Is this going to have the kind of impact that I need it to have? Is this going to change someone's life? Is this going to be that thing that will just be a turning point uh, for somebody else? That's what keeps me up at night. So everything that I'm, I'm busy with, everything that I'm doing, it revolves around that. And this is not something that, you know, I woke up one day and I said, this is what I'm going to do. But it's, it's from my journey my journey, the people that I've met, the people that I interact with every day and realizing, wow, you know, there might be a number of problems and and challenges that we encounter, but man, people are going through stuff, you know, and I might be that, that last ray of sunshine that will help that 
seedling grow, you know, and keeps me up at night. That's what keeps me up at night. So when I'm busy with anything at all, just know it's got something to do with that purpose in my life. I love that. Being a, a beacon of light, if you will, to others. And, That's it. you know, you speak to someone during the day or you send an email and you just you say something off the cuff that they needed to hear at that particular moment. That's it. That's it. Tell us on your journey, if you should look back, what or who influenced you the most? So it could be people, books, a moment in time that, that kind of gave you that thing to really drive you to keep going. Wow. Uh, <laughs> sure. That, that's a long list. <laughs> but <laughs> but if, if I really have to pinpoint, it wouldn't be you know, the qualities I'm about to describe now are not, um, they're not indwelling in one individual, but this is across so many people that have touched my lives. It's that person that, that showed me kindness uh, when I needed it the most, when it didn't even look like I deserved uh, that kindness, that uh, random word that someone will say to a very timid, quiet, and insecure uh, ha someone who has a very low self-esteem, that was me. Um, and I just couldn't imagine being relevant in anyone's life at any point in time in my life because I felt like me, myself, I needed, I needed reinforcements. And there were so many people who came at different points in my life with a random kind word, Petrina, you know, you're doing great. Petrina, you're beautiful. Petrina, you matter. Petrina, I see you. I hear you, you know, things like that. And, you know, there are lots of people who played that role in my life. Um, some more than others, of course. Um, I'm very involved in ministry and church. So my pastor is someone who, you know, plays a very, very important role in my life. And he's given me a platform to give vent to talents I didn't know I had. Um, you know, he's, he's out there leading from the front you probably know him pastor chris so i'm really close with him and um he's given me platform i didn't even know i would be in the industries that i'm in now but he spotted me and said hey you pick up a camera you're gonna be my photographer from now on and i thought me you know you could have anybody in the world you are famous you are amazing why would you pick me and he just thought well i think you've got what it takes to do big things and he didn't just see you know, some little girl who could do photography, but he saw something bigger in me. And he knew that just by giving me a platform, he was giving so many other people a platform because I was not going to waste that opportunity. Because just mm. from that tiny opportunity, you know, only Petrina became and boom, you know, but basically every single person who ever shared a kind word, whoever uh, lent a helping hand, whoever took a moment to notice me, whoever, um, you know, tried to leave my atmosphere better than how they encountered it. That that's the person that every single day I wake up and I thank God for them because mm -hmm. I'm trying to be that person to other people today. I like that a lot. <laughs> that, that changed the atmosphere, you know, and it really is about how you make other people feel. So how do you, when you leave a conversation or you leave a room, how did you make them feel? So that's how they're going to remember you by. That's it. Definitely. Um, when I think, when I describe people who are really influential, I think of them as like a, a bouncing ball with a color be bright yellow. If, you're, if you were bouncing around in a room, let the entire room be a complete disaster with just bright yellow splashes everywhere because you were there. That room is everyone's life, everyone who encounters you, that, that, that room. So let someone walk away and say, man, I'm covered in bright yellow because they encountered you. Mm, fantastic visual. You make great content. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Virginia, as a, a working mom, juggling household, husband, children, work life, how do you balance all of this? So I don't believe in work-life balance, but I believe there, there are certain things that we can control and others not. 
But how do you lead all of us to make sure that you take care of Petunia? So where does the self-care come in and what do you do to ensure that Petunia is not always left on the back burner? Wow. (laughs) That's a conversation I have with myself every day. (laughs) 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 Well, you know, you can kind of start feeling like you are spreading yourself thin, you know. (laughs) Just today I was rushing from somewhere else and I'm like, I need to get home. And people are like, why are you so panicked? I'm like, because it's important, you know. (laughs) But, (laughs) you know, every single day for me is a gift. Um, and I don't, I don't waste my gifts. Um, and you can only pour from a cup that is full. You can't pour from an empty cup. And I, I prioritize my well-being because if I don't have anything in me, then I've got nothing to give. You know, you, you want to be a superhero, but if your br- wings are broken, you can't fly and you can't come to anybody's rescue. Um, so I spend every single day uh, building me up. It's not, it's not something that I take, a, take for granted at all. Everywhere I go, it's, um, you need to produce on demand. You know, you won't have, you won't always have an opportunity to say, please be available at 3.30 to share. Your th-. Sometimes you will meet someone who needs whatever you've invested in you right now. And if you've got nothing to to, from inside, then you've got, you can't make an impact in someone's life. So I spend time every day, whether it's late in the evening when the kids are in bed or early in the morning before they get up. I listen to uh, uh, my Christian messages from church. I sit and I listen, success motivation, how to build myself up. You know, I listen to the word of God. It, it's, it's a huge priority for me. I don't, I don't take it for granted. I spend time in prayer. Um, my relationship with my father, my God, my maker is it takes center stage. That's all that I am. And as long as I'm not okay, I can't offer anything to anybody else. I can't bring you into my vessel if it's not moving, you know? So that's something that I do every single day. Um, Ministry is my life. So you will see it bleeding into everything that I do. People uh, call me that lady that always says, praise the Lord, you know, because (laughs) that's pretty much my response every time. Like, ah, praise God. Are you serious? You know, those are the words that come out of my mouth. Cause you, it, when you squeeze me, that's what you get. <laughs> that's what you get. That's what I'm all about. So it's a priority for me. It's something that I do every single day. I read my daily devotional, the Rhapsody of Realities. Um, I think she got a chance. And this, this is, this is me. So when I open a book, you know, the sanctifier in you, uh, the stakes are high, be prepared ahead of the evil day. You know, these are the things that I'm, filling my mind with every single day. I have no room for um, negativity in my life because it takes away. And every single thing that I have in me is what I need to be able to give to others. So I have no room to waste any potential or, you know, so it's a priority for me. I spend time in the word. I spend time, you know, pampering myself. And I really love what Courtney was saying, that bath, that all important bath, Girl, you you onto something. <laughs> I take that time for myself and I pamper myself and I don't feel guilty about it. That's something that is quite important. If you take mm-hmm. time out, don't now beat yourself up that, you know, maybe the world will fall apart because you took a moment. It's not. People will be okay. They will survive. Okay. <laughs> but it's important. I take time to myself. Sometimes it's a spa treatment, you know, but it's necessary because you can't pour from an empty cup. Hmm. I think mom guilt is real (laughs) and we need to all manage that (laughs) yeah you speak a lot about gratitude and blessings and I feel that with people in my network the more successful you become the more grateful you are and the more expressive one becomes with your gratitude so whether it's Mm -hmm. keeping a journal or just saying it out loud that you're grateful for an opportunity or a moment or meeting Mm -hmm. someone Mm. What would your advice be to all the up and rising stars in this room? Because we've got solopreneurs, we've got people who work secular jobs and do side hustles. We've got people who have been running businesses for a long time. What's your advice to them for finding that gratitude or getting into a mind space of gratitude? That's a very good, very good question. 
my best piece of advice is that I know people will say, oh, for me to be successful, I need to be wealthy or I need to have achieved certain things by this age or, you know, I need to have ticked certain boxes in my life that I can say I'm successful. But for me, this definition of success that I'm about to say is something that drives me all the time because it's relative to where I'm at in my life at any given point in time. I can never say, okay, I'm done. Thank you, everybody. Take a seat. No, success is uh, making your world better than how you encountered it, finding a problem and solving it, uh, identifying a human need, meeting it, you know, um, making an impact that will be permanent. So let the world feel that you were here um, in, a, in a permanent way, you know. Those are the type of things that keep reminding me that, wow, was I a success yesterday? Thank God. Then I need to make sure I'm a success today, you know? Mm -hmm. And as long as I'm working towards that every day, I'm always grateful that, man, if I was a success last week and a success today and a success next week, I, like the gratitude will never stop flowing because you will never stop feeling like, oh, you know, things are happening in my life. Things are happening in my life. I'm making progress. You will always be noticing that progress because sometimes people are like, you were saying, thank you. I'm so grateful. What are you grateful for? I'm like, do you see me? I'm coming from far. Even yesterday to today, I've, yo, I'm coming from far. <laughs> so I don't forget because I needed to be a success in the village and I'm grateful for that. And the success when I was living in a bachelor flat, you know, squeezing in with other people. I needed to be grateful there. And when I was, you know, at every level and I'm look, I look back and I'm like, wow, that means I'm still going places. So I, I'm always reminded. So when I'm reminded, I'm grateful, like, man, this is so exciting. <laughs> you can see some beautiful babas there. <laughs> but, <laughs> but my advice to you is make sure you are a success every day. Did you, did you take one more step towards fulfilling a need in the world? Because if you did, thank God, man, you had that platform to do that. It's amazing. Mm -hmm. Not everybody has that. Because remember, wealth is not, you know, the presence of money. Wealth is ability. If you are mm -hmm. wealthy, that means you have ability to do stuff. You have, whether it's, uh, um, material ability you can buy this or that or it's ability to influence things you know then you mm -hmm. should be grateful and as long as you're trying to be a success again tomorrow then you will never forget where you're coming from and you will always be moving to the next level in the coming in the coming days absolutely you know acknowledging small wins and yes. celebrating the small wins mm -hmm. and being grateful for our journey to this point for it to take us to the next step Yes. That definitely builds on gratitude. That's it. Definitely. I want to ask you, what is your greatest failure? And what did you learn from it? Sure. <laughs> My greatest failure. It's, it's a challenging one to answer purely because of the way I see things. But if I really had to be honest, I think my greatest failure would probably be wasted time. Wasted time. Um, you know, like I said earlier, I didn't wake up one day and be like, she's here now, let's change the world, you know? No, <laughs> it was a journey, you know? I had time when I was thinking, why am I here? What's going on? Like, what am I even doing in this place? You know, I just, there was a lot of wasted time. And with the wasted time, it's wasted potential. Um, mm -hmm. It's wasted efforts because you're on a rocking chair, you know, uh, you're putting in the force, but no distance covered. That, you know, that would probably be my biggest regret because I spent, like I mentioned earlier, I was a timid, quiet, very insecure young lady. Um, and I'm glad for, uh, you know, sessions like this where people can 
realize their own potential and start to soar because mm-hmm. back in my day listen to me sounding like i'm so much older <laughs> <laughs> you know we didn't have such things and um, this was a huge um, disadvantage because I spent a lot of time wasting time um, asking myself useless questions why me why this and you know spending so much wasted years trying to fit into a box that someone else designed for me and Mm -hmm. not realizing that actually that's not my destiny and stuff like that, you know, it still keeps me up at night every now and then when I think about, man, I could have done so much if I just stopped thinking about this and focused on this instead. And that for me would feel slightly like a failure because I could have used that time for mm. maximum impact. But I thank God for the time that he has given me from that time to now and the, the progress that I have made even with that wasted time, you know, being factored in. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, um, for me, if I had used that time as well, imagine how far it would have gone, you know, imagine the lives that I would have touched. Maybe I would be on 100,000 subscribers and 100,000 other people are sitting out there Mm -hmm. saying, thank you, Petunia. I tried this and look at where I am. And, you know, I've supported, you know, so many other people. It would have really done a whole lot more so I think that for me is something that when I look back and I could change anything at all that would probably be it that would probably be those those wasted years of kind of just going around in circles trying to Mm -hmm. fulfill somebody else's picture of who Petrina is supposed to be Mm. you know that resonates with me I have the same conversation in my head at times like where could I have been if I'd stopped wasting time on certain things so I think that resonates with quite a few of us. <laughs> That's it. Definitely. You've dropped a, quite a few polls of wisdom, Petunia. So if you could say, what was that one thing you want all of us in this room to take away from today? What would that be? Wow. You've spent years. You've spent years building you and when I say building you this could be a beautiful building or it could be a really whack building but you've been building you've been building but now is the time to actually assess that building because people need to live in that building can that building stand would it hold the weight you know, can it withstand the, the, the blowing winds? Because the blowing winds will always be there. You know, mm-hmm. it doesn't matter what's going on in your life. If you think of the worst day of your childhood or of your teenage lives or whatever, there was always some other day that superseded that. And you felt like, wow, man, I was kidding that time. This is serious now. Mm-hmm. But don't you think it's time that maybe you'd spend some time on that building? and made sure that it's actually thebomb.com because like I said, you can only pour from a cup that's got substance in it. Mm. So start focusing on the investment of your personality so that you can pour out to others. Life is so short. It sounds like a cliche, but I promise you it really is. You spent 20, 30, 40, however many years to get to this point. But one moment can end it all. Imagine that. One moment can end it all. And then it looks like everything you were doing was vanity. Isn't it time you started spending your efforts, your, your, your energies on eternal things? Things that are really going to you know, leave this world better than how you first encountered it. It's a priority for me. I don't take my life for granted. I take every single moment as a gift to invest in me so that I can pour out to others. So that's why I'm building this building. And it needs to be a beautiful building because people need to live in it and the winds will continue to blow. But now I know this building will stand. It will stand because I've been working on it. I've put in the effort 
to make sure it's built on a strong foundation and it's standing tall, it's decorated well, and everyone else who has to lean on the building can be rest assured that this building won't fall apart. So that's my message to you. Make sure you're investing on your personality so you can have something to pour out to other people. And there's always somebody. Just look around you. Wow, that's profound. And Petunia, I think I speak on everyone's behalf when I say this. You have left us better than what we entered this room. So thank you so much. Thank you. It's been such a pleasure speaking with you. You've been inspirational. It's just been so amazing. I feel like we can chat for another hour. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. I'm grateful. Thank you so much for this awesome <laughs> opportunity. I cannot begin to describe how excited I am to be a part of it. Thank you so much. I'm grateful. <laughs> Thank you so much. We're grateful to have you here. And on a final note, how do we get hold of you? So how do we find you? Where do we find you? <laughs> well... <laughs> Besides what? <laughs> nice one. <laughs> well, <laughs> on YouTube, I am only Petunia. <laughs> People ask me why only Petunia, because some of the things I say and some of the thoughts I have, only Petunia can think like that. Like nobody else, I can't. <laughs> only Petunia. So you can find me on YouTube, only Petunia. On there, I've got my email address. I'm out there, y'all. People are like, you should hide. You should hide. <laughs> but I'm out there because people need to be able to find me in case you've got questions, in case you need help, in case you've got a cousin and a cousin and another cousin who really needs to find out about this. I'm out there. I'm doing the thing. So <laughs> get in touch with me. Send me an email. I'm only Petunia on Instagram. I'm trying. I don't post as often because I don't like taking photos. But I'm trying. <laughs> but on Instagram, I'm only dot Petunia. You will find me, the girl with the white hair. You can't miss it. <laughs> <laughs> love it. I absolutely love it. Thank you so much for your time. Really, really appreciate it. It's been so inspirational to speak with you. And we're so grateful that you could make it. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you so much, ladies, for listening. And thank you, Petunia. You, you're a remarkable woman. And you. you really have left a mark on all of us today. And I think you'll see a lot of us flooding to a YouTube channel to see what only Petunia <laughs> is saying. Because we Amen. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Fantastic. Thank you so much. Thanks, Petunia. Thank you, everyone, for joining. Thanks.